The president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, PSAIN, Mazi Sam Wabwa, has declared his interest to contest the presidential seat. Wabwa said his declaration for the top seat of government has brought to a close the erroneous impression that no southeastern Nigerian was showing serious interest in running for the office. He promised to rewrite the story of Nigeria with a vow to make appointments on the basis of geopolitical zones of the country. We are now being joined via Zoom by Mazi Samo Wambua. He is the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, PSN. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. And you? God is with us. It's interesting you've joined the race to contest for the number one seat of the nation. What inspired your move? Thank you, but before I take your question, let me correct that I am the immediate past president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Okay. My tenure, my tenure ended last November, so we have a new president, Professor C.O. Osifo. Okay, apologies uh, for so that. We didn't have that information. You're the immediate past no, president. No. No problem, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Are you still so part of the ESCO? Does that mean you're still part of the ESCO? Yes, I'm even a past president. I'm a member of the National Executive Committee. I'm a oh, I see. Okay, I, I now understand why that mix-up came up. Okay, that's all right. All right. You no are the problem. IPP. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Well, I, I, want, to, I want to say that uh, the reason I have decided to join the race is because... Like you and many Nigerians, we have gotten tired of being branded as people who are less intellectually endowed as the rest of the world. We are tired of being put down in the global sphere, where each time you look at the global indices, are you talking about human development index? Are you talking about uh, quality of life index? Are you talking about... Um, you know, life expectancy, corruption perception index. Most of the indices in the world, we are put down. We have become a country where 71% of Nigerians are poor and getting deeper in poverty. Corruption remains endemic. We have now gone to become a nation that kills its people, kills its youth, kills its women. We have become a nation of terrorists, bandits, and all kinds of malficient actors. And we are acting as if we're helpless. You've just announced those who were kidnapped. I passed through the road between uh, uh, Lafayette to this afternoon to come to Makodi. I'm speaking to you from Makodi. I use these roads. And you, 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 you just hear what is happening day after day as if we're overwhelmed. My brother... I have waited for Nigeria to change. I have preached for Nigeria to change. I have campaigned for Nigeria to change. I've written, I have canvassed, I have advocated. It got to the point where I feel that I have the key to solve Nigeria's problem. To What's resolve that Nigeria. Key? What's that key? You have the key to solve Nigeria's problem. What's yes, that key? The key is first to unleash Nigeria to create an enabling environment for the proliferation of productive activities. We want to make Nigeria a productive nation where everybody, able and willing, will have a means of productive activity. Either you're working for people or people are working for you. We're creating, we're building, we are growing, we are creating value, we are solving problems, we are filling needs, we're exporting, we are getting opportunities for our youth and our men and women to be gainfully employed. That's the pr primary thing holding Nigeria down. Poverty. We are a nation of 71% poverty, 53% unemployment among the youth. Such a nation cannot be but the kind of nation we have found ourselves beset with corruption, beset with, uh, with insecurity. And then we're a nation where there's so much injustice, where people are feeling maligned, where people are feeling cheated, where people are being ignored and mistreated where some group of people claim that they own the country and the rest of us don't own the country. Some people acquire all the wealth and the rest of us are left at the dregs of the society. This society cannot be harmonious. And then you're talking about unity. You can't force unity. 
Okay. Every union must be mutually satisfactory. So these are the things that have key, the key to resolve. Because when we resolve poverty, resolve the injustice in our nation, insecurity and corruption will quickly disappear and Nigeria will become a good nation. Mazi, I'm really yes, close. Sir. I'm worried because you, you just sounded like um, the rest of those who had governed this nation before. This sounded very convincing like in the past. So how ready are you to take up a political job of, of this magnitude? A political job is not more difficult than running uh, businesses that we have run. It's not more difficult than coordinating the activities we have done. All you need as a leader is to be able to know a create a vision for our country. We don't have visionary leaders. What is the vision of the country today? Do you know where we are going? We need to fashion a, a, a leader must be visionary, set a vision, provide the resources and the motivation, get the hire the right people to work with him, sell the vision to the people, and push the vision to its conclusion. So not speaking is not the issue. It's look, go back and see our pedigree. What have we done before? Which, where have we shown competence? Where have we shown character? Where have we shown courage? It is those things that determine your ability to build on a new assignment. Leadership is applicable. If you can lead a good Boy Scout group and lead them successfully, you can lead a military group successfully, you can lead a nation. The principles of leadership are, are the same. You must be visionary. You must be able to plan. You must be able to motivate. You must be fair-minded. You must know how to measure work and reward work and motivate work and punish uh, indolence or poor work. We need to state a country where the laws are, are applicable to the up, to the down, to the poor, to the rich. Mazi. We need to create... Yes, sir. So it is not a question of people may speak things. After all, what is right is right. The question is, do, are you able to do what is right? Mazi. Now, yes, sir. Uh, let's, um, you, you've spoken very well. Now, let, let's, let's, I want you to do a, a peek. Take, take, take a peek, right? Um, insecurity, okay. poverty, uh, poor power supply. Uh, <laughs> these are some of the uh, uh, problems bedeviling Nigeria. Which yeah. one would you address first? Well, insecurity is the first. Because if there's no security, nothing else works. You can't build an economy. You can't build a power plant. If the power plant will be vandalized the next day. So security is the first thing. So how would and you go about is, it? How exactly yes, sir, would you go because, about it? Let me tell you how I'm going to go about it. The first is to, sir, let me give you an example. In my community where I come from, in Aruchiku, if suddenly women are begin, people are beginning to rape women, if suddenly houses are being broken, if suddenly people going to the market are willing, do you know what happens? The elders of the community call the leaders, the family heads together, and they sit down in the, with their walking sticks in the OB, and everybody says, what we are seeing today is not what we used to see yesterday. What has, come, what has overcome us? Is this, is this, is, is, have the gods decided to fight us or is the problem with us? So they sit down. It's at that point that one man will say, I saw Konkwa's son the other day carrying a bunch of plantain with some boys. And I was wondering why they got the plantain for. I saw some people where they were sitting somewhere and they were smoking and planning. Look, this country is owned by people. They are owned by Nigerians. If there's a problem in the country that is intractable, like Mr. President said, in the area of insecurity, we're doing our best. Our best is not good enough. That's the admission of the president. He needs to call the owners of the country together and say, how do we collectively solve our problem? They say, I'm robbing, not be, not be spirit. I'm robbing a person. Every thief, every robber, every bandit has a locality. Get the people together and let them plan with you how to solve their problem. You can't be shaking, shaving people's head in the absence. Claiming you know all you think the way to solve a problem, throw more ammunition, throw more soldiers, 